So this problem gives us a frequency table. We don't know exactly what the ages were, but somewhere be the people between eight, 15 and 18 years old, there were five of them. And there were nine of them between 19 and 22. And so I've tried to arrange my compiler. Hopefully you're seeing this frequency distribution and my compiler is that I need a vector of ages. Now these are categorical variables. So there's a 27 and 30, there's a 31 to 34, 35 to 38. So there's the one vector. I want to build that vector as well. It's got a five, a nine, number of students because that table really is two vectors a categorical vector and a numerical vector we wanted a relative uh, frequency distribution so the relative frequency distribution instead of saying five we want to say that it's five out of the total number that's available if i simply look at the sum of the number of of the frequency column, <laughs> add those numbers up, it comes up to, to 46. Uh, <clears throat> notice there was, was another way that that could have been done. Plus 6, plus 9, plus 7. If I execute that script, then, <clears throat> and then here we added those up by hand, and of course they both add up to, to 46. Now, what we really wanted was a relative frequency here. I'm going to call that n. Then if I looked at the number of students, that's a vector. And divide that vector by n. Let's just look at that real quickly. There's about 10 or 11 percent of them in that first category, about almost 20 percent in the next one, almost 22 percent in the next one, and so on. This vector is really a relative frequency vector. So now I could build a relative frequency table. I want the ages, and now I want the relative frequency. And I need to convert this number to a percent, round it to uh, one decimal place. As a decimal number, it's 0.19565. I need to change it to a percent, which means I just move that decimal point over, and it's 19.56522, and I need to round that to the nearest one decimal place, so that five becomes a six, because the number after, after it is five or bigger. Question number 10. So here they've got a, it looks like a histogram or a bar plot, uh, so all the scores between one and seven, it looks like there's about seven of them. Between seven and 13, there's six of them. Between 13 and 19, there's 10 of them. In the histogram, we are going to choose to include the left-hand endpoint. So all those scores of 19 ended up in this, in this uh, class. If you got to 25, that would bump you up into the next class. The class width in this case is actually six. And what is the sample size? Just happen to have a calculator here. So my sample size is going to be n. n is going to be the sum of the vector made up of seven, because there's seven in this class. Between seven and 13, there's six. Between, between 25 and 31, like there's five. And between 31 and 37, it's like there's nine. And of course, I want to print out what n is so that I know what it is. And I've got an error. Let's see if we can debug that. 
Oh, see, some had to have a parentheses ending it. And I needed to build this vector, so I needed to end the parentheses for the for that as well. Oh. 41. Now, of course, you could have done that just by adding 7 and 6 and 10 and 4, 5. And nine. I have a quick question on the question you just did. For the class width, you said you subtracted the highest from the lowest. Is that correct? There's problem 11. That was the one that you were asking about. We're going from, from one up to seven, but not including seven. As soon yes, as you sir. get to seven, then it becomes in this class. Here we're going from 13 up to 19 not including 19. Uh, here's in number four, we were going from all the ages from 15 to 18. So somebody has an 18th birthday and they're going to be, we're going to say that they're 18 years old until their next birthday. So really we're going from 15 up to 19 but not including 19, as soon as they actually get to be 19 years old on their 19th birthday, then we put them in this next class. So the class width on this one, instead of being the, this large one minus the smaller one, which would be three, its class width is actually four. Now let's talk about one question that a number of people have asked. Suppose that I wanted this data, this script to be in my, in my report. One thing that some people sometimes do, I've got something called a, a screenshot. You may have a snip tool or something like that. So I'm going to select an area and snip that area. Okay. That makes a picture that I can take and, and put into my document. Now, don't do that. <laughs> the, the reason why is that that becomes, that would then become a, a document. Maybe I can actually pull up a document. And uh, so here I'm using LibreOffice. You might be using Word or, or Google Docs or something. I wonder where I saved that. Anybody notice? Let me do it again. So suppose that somebody decided to do that with the snip tool or with the, with the screenshot. Take a screenshot. And so sure enough, there's, there's the information. So take the screenshot. Shoot, I have no idea where it went. Oh, there it is. I'm gonna save it to the desktop. I'll just call this demo PNG. Uh, I wanna save that other demo. So if I don't call it demo one. then sure enough, I can look at my, I, I'm showing you something that I don't want you to do. A uh, number of people have kind of like this idea. Uh, so there's my demo one. And it's true that I can pull that over and plug it in here. Uh, I did the whole screenshot. Shoot. All right. 
right. Let me actually demonstrate this. Just being clumsy. So you've got a script, a, a snip tool, or a screenshot tool. I want to uh, select and grab an area. Take the shot. So there's the area I'm hoping to take a picture of. And that's what the picture should look like. And I'm going to paste that picture in as demo three. I'm saving that to my desktop. Here I am trying to write my report. I've got a title. I've got my name. I've got a date. I've got some contents. I've got some problem that's listed here. And inside of the problem, I needed to have a, uh, here is the R script. And so I had gone and saved that as demo three. So I put it there. Oops. Get over wrote what I was doing. Here's the script. that somebody can see my script here. The problem is that no one can actually access that script. If they were going to, to test that script out and see if it was working, they would have to actually type the script in themselves. On the other hand, if someone had done this, just copied that, and notice that this is actually easier to do. So a control C works for me. <clears throat> and copying that and try and get below this picture if I can. If instead of putting that picture in there, if I had said, okay, here's my R script. Okay. And here are the results. So I can come over here and those are the results. Then when somebody's reading this report, then they could come and actually copy this script from here and paste it into their uh, R compiler. Now notice that this was actually easier than, uh, than clipping and saving the file and trying to get it to work right in the word processor. <clears throat> using it, just using this text information is, uh, is much more powerful. I mean, it's, it's much easier to put it in for one thing. And then if somebody's reading your report and they want to test the script that you've got, then they can just copy that script and plug it into their R compiler. And so I can check to see if your script works properly. Okay, does that, does that idea make sense to everybody? This is the correct way to do it, not with a, a, a picture kind of thing. Okay, if we did some kind of a graph. Histogram again, I wonder what that does. And it feels kind of a boring histogram <laughs> because the sample size is, is so small. So 
So suppose that we had an x, which was a, I'll pick a bunch of random numbers. I have 300 of them. And then we wanted to have a histogram of those x's. Then I can, I can copy this image like that and uh, save it somewhere and paste it in. Or in that case, if you want, you could, could use your SNP tool and, and copy this because this is not something that, that somebody is going to uh, recreate. They're, not, if they're going to recreate it because they've got this code that's up here. That makes sense? So snipping uh, pictures is okay, but snipping your code or, the, or this output of the code, I suppose you could snip that output, but it's just as easy to copy numerical things. And, and you can right click on this and copy that image and just paste that image in rather than having to use your SNP tool. Any follow-up questions on that? I want to come back. On the, to, go ahead. On the written report and when it says uh, to do a histogram and frequency table, the frequency table is uh, is it the one like you did in the beginning of the class? Uh, it, it's like that. Uh -huh. let's, uh, let's look at that for a minute. Uh, you were supposed to build a frequency table with seven classes. Is that the problem that you're thinking of? Um, this one was the... Um the data of uh, the test grade. That's the question I'm looking at. Okay. Is and that's when I ask for like a histogram and a frequency table. All right. How many test grades are there? Are there a lot of test grades or just a few? Um, there is 23. 23 test grades? Mm -hmm. Okay. So hopefully the, the, they are all listed there in the problem or you can find them in the text and copy and paste them into to, uh, your yeah, thing. Yeah. So you've got these grades and somehow we need to get those grades into a vector over here. So I'm using C to build a vector. And uh, so let me build it a, another way. I'm going to sample from uh, 60, 75, 82, 89, and 90. I want to sample 200 scores from there. So, oops, probably built that wrong. Need to sample. 200 from that set. See if my sample function is working right. Okay. So so somewhere somebody's ooh, where am I getting 188 from? I thought I was sampling from this particular 
set. That uh, shouldn't have been that kind of a number. Our sample. Sample documentation. Okay, in. In a positive number, the number of items to choose from. X is either the vector, the size, and replace. No, okay, I know what my mistake was. Um, you need to get your data in there somehow. Sample uh, So do we just copy and paste all the grades that were given to us into that into those parentheses? Yes, you can do that. Grades blah, 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 to, and then you could copy and paste those grades in and and they have to be comma separated, right? Yes, so, sir. So maybe there was a 90 and a 75 and a 42. Oh, there's that doesn't happen very often. A 69 and 89 and an 80 and a 94. Okay, but you got a bunch of, but hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to just copy and paste those rather than having to type them all in. Then, then you could, could do a table of grades this is not going to be an interesting table here because I have all unique values. But when I do that, I only had 143. I had one of every one of them. So that's essentially a frequency histogram uh, already. But we can make it look a little bit better if we, let me save this. I'll call it grades.t to remind me that it's the table. And then, then I'm going to do a data frame of grades.t. I'm going to take that table and do a data frame of it, and it'll look like that. So 43, there's only, it only happened once, 69, and so on. Does that help? So if you could get your data here and then build a table of your data and then do a data frame of that table, then this would, I, I would then show this script in my report and I would show this result in my report. Okay, great question. A quick question on the homework. It was number two, I believe, when we were given a a pie um, a pie chart and um, about like the amount of money she wasted, and on one of the amounts, like what is a percent, like converting that amount of money to percentage. I was a bit confused on it. Okay, great. So what percent of her total spending did she spend on food? <clears throat> we could certainly add up the total amount that she's got here. And we want to know 356 is what percent of that total amount. So I could write those numbers down. 356 plus 44 plus 533 plus 267 or I might actually want to build that as a vector. 3, 3, 267. And I could look at the sum of that X. Got a budget of uh, $1,600. So 
So I'm going to call that relative x. I'm going to call that total for total. So if I take x divided by the total, that is I'm adding all of these numbers up, and then I'm going to divide each one of them by <clears throat> that total amount. Tell me what the relative x is. So she's spending about 22.25% on food, 27.75% on rent, and so on. So we want the one that's on food. So there's this number, control copy, that is the right fraction amount but they want it written as a percent. So I need to change this number to a percent. I do that by moving that decimal place two places to the right. So that's the percent. They want it to the nearest whole percent. So if I round this to the nearest whole percent, that would be 22%. Great question, did that help? Yes, sir. Uh, would I be able to see the R script one more time, please? Sure. Uh, the example I, that's often used is, ask, can we, suppose uh, that, that we know plot graph, the height of, of people. So, uh, measuring in inches, 72 inches, 69 inches, and uh, we know their weights in pounds, 169 pounds, 150 pounds. Uh, this kind of data is, is, is often collected. So H-E-I-G-H-T. So my doctor, when I go in and get weighed, then my doctor says, well, you know, for your height, you're just a little bit overweight. So, you, so that, that's the table of that data with the, with the five people that we looked at, their heights and their weights. Another way to look at that is with a scatter plot. So let's do a, it's just the command is just plot and you tell what's going to be measured on the x-axis and what's going to be measured on the y-axis. And so now that plot looks like that. So there's our person who was uh, 32 inches tall and they weighed 56 pounds. There's a person who was 50 something inches tall, 54, and they weighed uh, 135 pounds. And there's a person who's around 69 inches tall, and they weighed 150 pounds and so on. Now, of course, if we're putting this in a report, there should be a, a title here build a title with the main heights uh, predicting weight. It took these labels that I already had here. If I'm pleased with those, that's fine. But if I want to change them, then I can do the X label. Heights of the people. Y label is. Did anybody notice that mistake I made? Weights. Notice that each of these items have to be separated by commas. I want the color to be red. change these little circles to red. There does seem to be a relationship here in, in this sample. 
certainly as people get taller, their weights get more. Uh, when we do chapter 11, we'll look at that in a lot more detail.